Hello and uh, welcome. So today we'll be uh, having a chat about uh, ChatGPT and I'm very happy to have uh, Robert uh, Gebert here to, to look at that because he's been using uh, ChatGPT for, for some uh, important tasks in, uh, in his work. So we already discussed uh, what, we, what we did uh, using uh, GPT-3 uh, in the first part of this video, which will be posted on Robert's channel. So if you haven't watched it, uh, you can go check it out. And <laughs> and uh, now in this in this part we'll be talking about where we see it go and what we think can be done with it cannot be done with it. Uh, it's uh, it's still uh, in in the beginning all that, but that will be uh, interesting. So thank you, Robert, for for joining me. So thank you for from, from me, what man. you've seen, yeah, yeah, glad to have you. From what you've seen, you know where do you see it go and what do you think it will be. Um, for for us as translators or just you, people using technology. Well, I, I mean, I mean, who knows? And uh, I think uh, you know, like with any new technology, the short term will be overestimated, but the long term will be underestimated. And, and uh, but it, I think it's one of these things that the technology. You know, I'm not sure about ChatGPT itself, but the technology is here to stay. And uh, and I think it's because I'm already hearing a lot of translators saying, oh, it's, um, you know, it's not as good as the real people and it's not as good as, uh, as real life translators. And so they use that as a reason to ignore it. And I think that's dangerous um, because even, you know, even if you agree that you need human translators, uh, which I do, um, I still think, you know, this is new technology, it's useful technology. And the people it's most useful for when it comes to translation is people who actually know what they're doing. Uh, translation, you talked before that, you know, when, when you were, uh, you tried using it for translation, you tried using it, you know, with specific types of glossaries and you saw the mistakes it made. And uh, this is something that a translator can figure out. But if, you know, some person, you know, who owns uh, a furniture shop wants to translate into 10 different languages and they use ChatGPT, they have no idea what mistakes to look out for or not or anything. And, um, and so I think it will be a lot more useful in the hands of, you know, experts. And, uh, you know, so when it comes to translators, I think it will be useful for translators much more so than lay people. Um, so I, I do think uh, we should, uh, you know, try to experiment with it, keep up with it, see what's going on. And um, because it's part of our job as, uh, you know, as translators and, um, and just in general, because I, I do think it goes beyond translation, it will be used for many different things. And we already see, I, I saw already a job offering uh, for, I think it was a law firm saying they, they, were, they wanted someone uh, who was an expert or who had experience, not an expert, but experience with GPT prompts. And so, um, you know, and I think we're going to see uh, more and more of this stuff. So uh, in a nutshell, that's, uh, that's how I feel about this technology right now. Um, I don't know, what are your thoughts? You probably have something more concrete. Yeah, well, it, you know, it's. I would completely agree with the the, the way you you put it. I think, um, I think that's exactly that. the 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 thing we need to learn, uh, if we want to use those tools, is how to work with them, because that's that's a whole new era of uh, an an area in both ways of uh, interacting with with uh, with technology. You know, that's uh, it's like people training dogs for specific uh, tasks or even blind dog for that are used to to help blind people you you need somebody that is very good at training uh, the animal and and then the person that will be using uh, or collaborating with with the animal for specific tasks they need to understand uh, how to talk to it uh, how to understand its reactions for example for a blind person uh, where uh, how does my dog signal something that i need to understand and and adapt to it and and i think that that's, that's going to be that there's going to be a, a, a big area of uh, expertise on how to leverage the power of these tools uh, and how to communicate with them. Uh, so there will be this whole area. And then there, there's the, the area of the provider that's providing a service based on that tool. And they have the know-how, uh, like the dog trainer, they have the know-how on how to use the tool and make it do things it can do. Uh, and, and, and I think that's, that's gonna be that. I mean, if you look at, um, for example, what Microsoft has been preparing, and that's that's out for big enterprises at the moment, but that would be 
in the in the future. So the 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 co um, I think it's Copilot uh, that you you will have in in Microsoft uh, 365 tools. <clears throat> and if you look at the presentation that. Uh, the presentations with the nest because there's uh, several sections of that that's, uh, that are available already if you look at what it can do basically it's it's very useful it, it, it will save you tons of time uh, i mean if you have like a massive spreadsheet for uh, what the company has been doing within a year and things like that being able to browse through it uh, and and pull specific data or trends uh, that's something that would take you a lot of time uh, if you were doing it manually. Just give it to the robot, does that for you, and and, and you come back uh, and, and get it. But you will get a very better uh, uh, result that would be better if you do it through uh, what Microsoft has prepared uh, rather than going into ChatGPT and start tuning it for yourself to, to, to do the, the same task because they have the expertise on how to make that task being, you know, pipeline in the process uh, right. the best way possible. So, you, 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 I think you will still have these big companies in the middle that will have the know-how to tap the power of these tools and make it with uh, a user interface that is uh, be that that will feel uh, natural that you can interact with so that you can ask it to to perform tasks. Uh, for you, so that that's the way I see it. We'll need to train on indivi at the individual le level on how we can use that, and then we'll have big companies that know how and will prepare tools that leverage the power of these things. And with, it's what it's already happening. Right. It, yeah. It, it seems like it. It's happening with the big companies and also small ones. I mean, just with AI in general. I mean, yeah. It's uh, you know we're seeing so many come out for all types of things. Um, and um, and actually, I had a couple of questions since you're more of a tech person, and uh, so I think you're a good person to ask. First of all, um, for things like confidentiality, um, as far as I know, GPT, ChatGPT, um, it uh, it doesn't learn. Well, you know, it builds off what you put in. But I'm wondering, so if I wanted to work on, say, a contract, I take a confidential contract and put in a text box. Does that end up on a database somewhere, or like, do you risk? losing that comp you know making that confidential data available somewhere that someone else could access or or i don't know or you know could that be an issue do you think coming up these these are all cloud services so right. that there's uh, at the moment uh, it's not happening on your computer it's right. it's happening on the cloud so the information is leaving your computer uh then you know depending on the uh, how uh, sensitive the information is you'll have to decide whether you want it to to be on the cloud or not uh, but it, it will be sent uh, the same way that when you're uh, connecting to a machine translation uh, your source text is sent to uh, the MT provider and if you're using uh, machine translations that have uh, adaptability features that need to learn from what you have translated then in that uh, specific situation, your uh, data, what you have translated, is sent also to to, to that cloud, and that's the same with with ChatGPT. Obviously, if you're putting information there, it's leaving your computer, then it's in their system with the data centers they they use, with uh, the amount of security uh, they use, and that's uh, then it it goes in the same sort of situation as big clouds uh, like uh, OneDrive, you know, G Drive. It's not not that it's right. used in the same way, but that the uh, security protocols they have will be, I, I guess, I haven't checked it specifically, but uh, I would imagine they would start to use the same processes. And what you put in chat GPT actually, um, I've seen that somewhere that if you uh, agree to use chat GPT, you, you allow them to have a look at what you're doing and that's probably for security purposes let's say uh, i'm asking chat gpt to build my malware you know that's right, that's yeah. not that's bad you know you don't want people to use chat gpt to to be used yeah. to do to to create malware so you know that they they, they have you know they, they say they can and will look at it a bit in the same way that when you upload a video to youtube you know that they have flagging systems 
and things like that for for content that they don't want to be on the, on the platform. Uh, so yeah, so you know that you know if if you're doing something wrong, well, obviously you shouldn't, but they're they're <laughs> they're sort yeah. of preparing you to know that they will be looking into it. Well, yeah, I mean, but yeah, aside from wrong stuff, but it could this could be an issue for say um, law for I mean, or, or hospitals or government agencies yeah. or stuff like that if they have private data, you know that. Um, that, you know they, they might not want to put it there and um and yeah it's the same issue that you have with machine translation as well um that you can't just put anything on google translate because yeah uh, there's that risk there um okay yeah i was uh I, I was wondering about that and um and sorry while we're at it actually another thing i was wondering about was um also the um like the black box or the liability i should say with it like so if someone uses chat gpt for a translation and the translation ends up being incorrect and something wrong happens, you know, and so someone has to be liable for that. Um, you can't really sue chat GPT or Microsoft for it. Um, no. And uh, and so, yeah. And so uh, I wonder if this will start being, anyway, you know, the first legal case, you know, dealing with something like that might, uh, might be coming up sometime soon. Um, you know, if people, uh, if people just rely on this for, yeah, for translation or for other stuff as well, you know, just rely on artificial intelligence because that's not a real entity that you can hold liable for m mistakes. Um, yeah. I, and yeah, I don't know if this has come up, come, I guess it's too new to have come up yet. Really. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, the, it's the problem that you were, um, uh, talking about in, in the beginning, in the first video, it's like, uh, expectations, bit, uh, you know, against what, what can do and what it should be used for. It's, it's not, right. uh, it's not to be used unsupervised, you know, it's uh, it's like when cat tools came around, I mean, uh, and, and you had the perfect match in your text. Well, sure, it's, uh, you know, the, the source is exactly the same, uh, but uh, do you really want uh, the target to be the same in the same context or are you not going to check it? Of course, you know, you're, you're you need to recheck what's been, even it's been copy pasted by your CAD tool automatically, you, you're a translator, you're the expert. So you have to know if that fits where it goes actually at the moment where it is, you know, uh, in that context. So you, you have a duty of checking uh, the output. I mean, robots can be only, uh, you know, they can be good, but even with repeat, repeatable tasks, uh, you, you you need uh, human supervision, you know, for example, yeah. if you go, let's take about, let's talk about, uh, say, for example, a car factory. Uh, it's, it, you know, it's mainly automated processes now. It's all about robot stuff. How they paint cars, well, they dip it in bath and then the car comes out painting and that's it. Uh, so you would expect that it would come out perfect every time. Actually, it doesn't. Uh, sometimes they do have cars that don't come out painted uh, or how they should have been. Although it's a repeated process that has all, you know, the same context all the time. So they have someone that goes and fix these paintings, uh, you know, or cars that will be presented at auto shows. They are not painted automatically in the factory. That's actually a person that's painting them with a gun. So, uh, you know, it, it's... You can't expect robots to get everything perfect every time without supervision. So that's, uh, I think that's where the liability still is. Uh, when, when we want and we think that robots can perform uh, well enough uh, to work unsupervised, then that's for the lawmakers to, to look at that. I mean, they, they've taken chat GPT-3, then chat GPT-4 uh, to pass the bar exam. Uh, and actually, I was I was looking at some results that were presented in a in a YouTube video the other day, and uh, ChatGPT4 uh, passed the bar exam uh, in the the upper tier uh, of results wow. this time. So yeah, but do you want ChatGPT4 as a lawyer? You know? <laughs> no, so yeah. that's that that's that's the situation there, you know. So it's it's performing well, yeah. But do you want to do it a job that's normally performed by your humans, that has uh, morals, you know? So yeah, it's uh, I, yeah. We're not we're not there yet. And if if that does come, then lawmakers will look into it, I guess. Yeah. 
but uh, no, but yeah, so that's true. You need the uh, adult super, you know, human supervision, you know, and yeah, for like, for example, for trans blend translations as well, because I could see a company using chat GPT to do the translation and then spitting it out. And then maybe there's a problem, there's a mistake. And because of that, some bi big business deal doesn't work out and they get sued. Well, they can't, you know, they can't blame it on chat GPT because, you know, yeah. it's a, uh, it's a robot. And, uh, and yeah, so, um, so yeah, in that sense of liability, I think as well, yeah, it, it, um, we need, um, like you say, human supervision. Uh, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see going ahead. Yeah, yeah, for, for translation, because we look at it also from a, a, a translator point of view, but the, the, the difference with ChatGPT, as we were talking about earlier on also in, in the first video, is that it, it's not made only for translation. You know, it's the, the way it's built is more to be like an assistant. And, uh, you know, it's like uh, if, if that was a full size robot, well, translation would be maybe uh, uh, the little finger, you know, part of the, the, the system because that it can do that and it does it well, but it's not been built for that. It's, it's something that it can do, but uh, it's not specifically made for that. Um, so that's yeah, they're, they're called large language models and they've been built on on text and things like that so that we can interact with it and ask it questions and it will understand sorta of, what uh, what what we're asking it. And then you've got the limitations that we get um, and those are, are are based on data sets. So you were mentioning in the other video how you asked it a question about uh, GPT plus and it didn't have an answer. And basically that's because it, it, it hasn't been trained on that data. Uh, so from, from what, I've, uh, what I've heard, uh, GPT uh, is now on, that's available to the public is trained with data that's good only up to 2021. Right. So that, yeah. anything after that is just is just not in it. So either you're making a prompt uh, in a way that will ask it to search the internet to find you an answer, like with the the, the Bing part of it, and because ChatGPT is now uh, embedded in Bing, so you you can leverage it this way. Uh, but if you ask it to produce something based on its own data set and uh, it's not there, it it just won't do it, it can't. It may try to hallucinate something, but if it's not there, it just can't use it. It's like yeah. I was I was asking it earlier on because I saw, I, I started to play with it because uh, now you can add Bing uh, in, a, in a Skype call. So, because we're using Skype to, to do yeah, that. I you did that. And yeah, and I asked it some, some questions and it just didn't have an answer for me because it's not in the data set. You know, right? Uh, on, on how to use the the API for something didn't have it, uh, but then when I asked it a specific question on how to uh, uh, connect ChatGPT, for example, in uh, in Trados, well, it it was able to find. Uh, no, it didn't have the information for ChatGPT, but when I asked it for DeepL, it came up with the whole process on how you connect DeepL. Uh, to um, to SDL uh, to RWS Trados, and yeah, in a concise way, very good. But didn't have the information for itself <laughs> for the yeah. GPT API because it it's not in the data set that uh, that's that's been right. used for training it. But it was able to to find it for something that existed earlier on. So, but in that case, did you have to ask for it to search for the data, or or it? Um... So, because uh, the deep L, it just knew it right away, right? Okay, okay. So, yeah, yeah. you didn't have to ask. Because, I, I, yeah, I've been wondering about the differences between, yeah, using it with the Google search, with the Bing search, and um, and just using it by itself. And uh, um, see, because I think I, I mentioned to you when we were off camera how the um, head of the Chamber of Commerce here asked ChatGPT, oh, you know, give me some information about uh, the local chamber of commerce. And it said it was started in 1963, blah, 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 blah. And she was like, actually started in 1957. Like it, it's just weird. It came up with a random date. And, um, and you know, but yeah, it, it just seems like it wasn't in its data set and it came up with something plausible. But um, I wonder if she, she had used Bing, if it would actually have been able to retrieve that data or not. 
Well, if probably if you if you ask it to find the page where the information is published, may be able to do it. I don't even know if uh, it is published, but yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's because if 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 it can't be uh, searched on the internet side of things either, if it's only in books, um, it, it won't it won't be able to do it. So yeah. it's yeah. But I think I think it's sobering also because you know people get excited and you know they think oh that's the end of our jobs. It's not. Uh, and 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 when you see the limitations, what it can do, what it cannot do, and and how you can use it to your own benefit, that's I think that's that's the best way to look at it because then you, you see what it's doing at the moment, where it's good, where it's not, and you know, even for for people are talking about how we can write code. That's great, uh, but you can't come to it and tell it, "Well, go on, make me a cat tool." Can't yeah. do it. <laughs> now, if you say if you're a, yourself a developer and, and you're working on something. And uh, you ask it, well, please uh, make a small section of code that asks this process to do that. Uh, now it can do it. You know, if you yeah. give it the context, you know, that that's my code at the moment. I want to include that, uh, come up with some code to uh, perform that specific action. Well, in that context, may be able to do it. You'll need to double check it. <clears throat> and what I think is interesting is that uh, when you see people testing it for coding, you do get a context explanation of why it's doing that and why it gave you that that specific answer. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it shows the work behind it. Yeah, and so I think, you know, this brings us back to the fact that, yeah, I, you know, people are scared that it'll take their job, but I think it'll be most useful for people in that job specifically, you know, yeah. uh, because, uh, yeah, they'll be able to use it and know what to look for. And so I think it really helps to learn more about it, to play around with it, and to, you know, see how it can be used. Absolutely, yeah, that's that's the way I was looking at it also, is that uh, people that will learn how to use it, that will help them. And you can see that being easy done, easily done in smaller companies, but where it's going to be used more, it's in big companies, because they will be able to have maybe a custom or specific uh, pipeline to, to use. Uh, GPT-4, but then training more people on how to use it is a bigger challenge. So that will be interesting to see how it develops. Hello, do you want to learn about chat GPT? <laughs> yeah, someone has, has something to say, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, that was interesting. Excellent, yeah, excellent. Um, anyway, yeah, that, that's pretty much all I have. I found this super interesting though to uh, to talk about, um, first of all, you know, what we've been doing with uh, ChatGPT and, uh, and where we see it going. It'll be really interesting to see the next few months, years to see where it leads us. Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That was nice having this chat to you because I enjoyed the experience you, you had using it too. Uh, I think that was very enlightening. I hope uh, the, the viewers will, will like that too. Um, and for those that have questions or stuff, on what we know well, you know, please, Put them in the comments. Thank you so much, uh, Robert, for uh, the, this chat. Very enjoyable. And all the best on uh, your book. Uh, can you remind us what it's called? Uh, it's called How to Set Up Your Own Translation Agency. It's out now on um, on Amazon, Kindle and print. Yeah, oh, there you go. So if you want to start up your uh, translation agency from scratch, you know where to start from. Thank you, Robert. <laughs> OK, thank you. Thanks. Bye bye. All the best. Bye.